video we're going to look at the four different levels of protein structure along with one extra level which is known as the prosthetic group. So we're going to go through this in order. So here's the primary structure and this is defined as the order of the amino acids in the polypeptide and what we have with polypeptides is a specific polypeptide will have a very very precise amino acid order and if that amino acid order isn't the same in every one of those polypeptides that's produced, well, there's going to be a knock-on effect for the next level uh, of protein structure, which means that in the end, you're not going to get the same polypeptide produced. So, primary structure is the order of amino acids in the polypeptide. And in this picture, we've got an example of this uh, using colors. So, for this particular polypeptide, if I wanted to replicate it, I would need the exact same order of amino acids. So I would need green, pink, pink, green, blue, green, pink, pink, green, pink, green, blue, green, red, pink, green, red, 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 pink, pink, green, green, blue, blue, red, 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 pink, pink, green, blue, red, red, green, pink. Now obviously amino acids aren't colours, um, but this is a way of, of just illustrating the point. So the primary structure is the precise order of the amino acids. The only bonds that we have present at the, amine, at the primary structure level is the, uh, the peptide bond. So moving on to secondary structure, well, this is the way that the primary structure folds uh, on itself. We have two different formations of secondary structure. We have the alpha helix, which we see like a corkscrew shape, and we have a beta pleat, which is like a zigzag. Uh, at this level of structure, we only have one additional bond present, and that is the hydrogen bond. Uh, so the hydrogen bond is a weak electrostatic attraction uh, that holds the secondary structure in place. Moving on, we have the tertiary structure. So the tertiary structure is where the secondary structure spontaneously folds into a specific 3D shape. And this is due to attractions between the R groups. So each R group of the amino acids has... Uh, you know, a unique, a unique chemical formula, and some of them attract each other really strongly. So we can get covalent bonds, we can get ionic bonds formed, um, and this produces this really specific 3D structure that's going to be really important for things like enzymes. You know, if the if the enzyme's 3D structure isn't the same, then the active site isn't going to be the same shape, and it's not going to catalyze the reaction that it's meant to. And this is all linked back to the primary structure because if you don't have the correct amino acids in the chain, in the correct order in the chain, you will not get the correct secondary structure forming and you will not get the correct tertiary structure forming. So, you know, even one amino acid difference in the primary structure can result in a wrong tertiary structure, which could result in an inactive enzyme. Moving on, we have the quaternary structure, and this is where you have one or more polypeptide chains associated together. So this is separate chains that are attracted to one another and that work uh, as one, one molecule. A good example of this is haemoglobin, and we can look at haemoglobin in the next picture because haemoglobin is a great example of prosthetic groups. Um, so what we have with haemoglobin is, is four subunits, so four different polypeptides. Well, it's actually two lots of two different polypeptides, uh, each with an Fe2 plus ion the heme ion, uh, integrated within that. So that's uh, a prosthetic group is any non-polypeptide incorporated into the structure of a protein. So Fe2 plus in haemoglobin is the prosthetic group. So those are the four levels of protein structure along with prosthetic groups.